11, 2021, stand up for your country. A lot to tell you about today, things you will not hear anywhere else, which is our hallmark here at the No Spin News. So let's begin with a year ago today, a year ago today, remember that? March 11, 2020, the World Health Organization declared a worldwide pandemic because of COVID. And a number of things happened in rapid succession today, a year ago. One, the stock market went down 700 points. All right, number two, the National Basketball Association canceled games. Number three, Tom Hanks and his wife announced they had COVID in Australia. And everybody was going like this, whoa, what is going on? Now, I had warned you, if you were with us back on January 23rd, 2020, that this COVID thing coming out of Wuhan, China, was going to be bad. And I was the first broadcast journalism guy to do it, I believe. I could be wrong on that, but I, we haven't seen any earlier than that. But I have to say, I wasn't panicked. I didn't, I didn't see the terrible uh, toll that COVID has taken. I didn't see that. I thought it would be, you know, three or four months, and then it would kind of subside like most uh, pandemics do. So anyway, today is the anniversary, and tonight Joe Biden will speak about where we're going from here. Okay, okay about 15 minutes. We'll get to that in a moment. But I want to play you um, then-President Trump's soundbite on the COVID situation. Go. I am confident that by counting and continue to take these tough measures, we will significantly reduce the threat to our citizens, and we will ultimately and expeditiously defeat this virus. We are at a critical time in the fight against the virus. We made a life-saving move with early action on China. Now we must take the same action with Europe. We will not delay. I will never hesitate to take any necessary steps to protect the lives, health, and safety of the American people. I will always put the well-being of America first. Okay, so President Trump took three actions. He stopped flights from China in January. Then today, a year ago, he stopped flights from Europe coming here. And they automatically, I shouldn't say automatically, they went into the vaccine mode, all right? So U.S. scientists went into the vaccine mode very early. And that's why we were able to get it at the end of November 2020, which was a miracle, I think. Um, and of course, the press didn't give uh, President Trump any credit at all for that. Now, um, yesterday, a year ago, May, uh, March 10th, 2020, Joe Biden said this. People just wonder what's going on, and he's down there golfing today. I mean, there is no sense of urgency. The American people, I think, want to know that their that, that their president is on top of this, understands it, and that is being guided by science. Okay, guided by science, obviously a theme of Joe Biden's uh, ever since he announced his run for the presidency. Guided by science. So, who was the top science guy? in the Trump administration. Well, that would have been Dr. Anthony Fauci, right? And here's what the doctor said on March 8th, 2020. Go. Right now, people should not be walking. There's no reason to be walking around with a mask. When you're in the middle of an outbreak, wearing a mask might make people feel a little bit better, and it might even block a, a droplet. But it's not providing the perfect protection that people think that it is. All right, there's the science a year ago. All right, there's the science. So President Trump, he didn't go on the mask wearing tangent until months later. And so, after hearing the scientist, Dr. Anthony Fauci, say what he just said, a lot of Americans say, eh, I'm not going to wear that mask. That was a mistake in hindsight. So the mask is a barrier both to get it and to spread it. The barrier is not foolproof. People still get it by wearing masks if you're in a crew, but it is a barrier. So um, I think I provide a pretty good perspective about a year ago from the top three guys, Trump, Biden, and Fauci. Now what went wrong? 
Well, immediately COVID was politicized by the corrupt corporate media because there was a presidential race underway already. And all of the media, the corporations, with the exception of Fox News and some talk radio, was rooting outwardly and supporting Joe Biden. So whatever Donald Trump did, and he did make mistakes, President Trump made mistakes, but whatever he did was going to be wrong. It's going to be bad. It's going to kill Americans. So immediately the people who supported Donald Trump, all right, they got on the defensive. So instead of everybody in the country uniting together to fight this heinous virus, we cleaved it. And to this day, there are people who don't want to wear masks, they don't believe in social distancing, and all of that. And then there are other people who shut everything down and ruin lives and ruin economies and all of that. The best study is Florida versus California because you have similar climate. In Florida, there was a two-month lockdown under Governor DeSantis. California is still locked down. On the basis of population, all right, California has more cases than, than Florida, proportionally. All right, of course, California has more people, but to a proportional, California has more cases. So what good did the total lockdown do the largest state in the union when Florida operated pretty much business as usual, all right, since the pandemic began with two months of lockdown. Simple man, simple question, you make the call. But the media was invested in the total lockdown. Many reasons, primarily central government power, that's what the progressives believe in. You are told, I am told what to do and when to do it. That's the country they want. Okay. So the result of not being together led to more deaths in this country. If we had all been in it together and all said, all right, we're going to be ultra cautious. We're not going to go to motorcycle gatherings in Deadwood, South Dakota. We're not going to go to river parties in South Texas. We're not going to go to spring break in Florida. If we had all done that, the death toll would have been low. So, right now, as it stands, 530,000 Americans are dead. 530,000. Worldwide, 2,622,000 are dead. Now, the worldwide toll is much higher because China is never going to tell you how many people are dead over there, and Russia is not going to tell you, and a lot of the countries just don't report. The African countries don't report. So I say five million at least worldwide are dead from this pandemic. I was mentioned Joe Biden speaks tonight. Now I will tweet during it, but I'm not expecting much here. Um, it'll be the only interesting thing is whether Biden will give credit to Trump for the fast track vaccine. That's the only interesting thing to me. I know what Biden's gonna say. He's gonna read the prompter. He'll read it all right. He's reading it right now. He's rehearsing. Um, so 8 p.m., all the networks will take it. Um, Reuters reported today that uh, Mr. Biden is going to say, where we go from here. All right. That's worthy. But then what he should have done is giving the address from the White House press room and taking questions. And I have three. <laughs> I have three questions. None of them are about COVID. Okay, I'll leave the COVID to the science. I'm leaving that. But I, I have three questions. Very simple question, simple man, simple question. One, Mr. President, who is benefiting, exactly, specifically, who is benefiting from your open borders policy? Who? Now, maybe he say, well, the Mexican drug cartels are benefiting, because they are charging people thousands of dollars to smuggle them in here, particularly children. So are the 13,000 migrant children now under the supervision of the U.S. government, are they benefiting by the open borders policy? Now, there isn't a chance in hell that Joe Biden could answer that question. The only answer could be, well, 
the poor suffering people who want a shot at the American dream, they're benefiting. If you be that honest, okay, because in the long run they'll benefit. Short run, no. Long run, if they get to stay here, they will. But is the rest of America benefiting from this? No. Mexico benefiting from it? Mexico's criticizing Biden. Because they got to deal with the tens of thousands, soon to be hundreds of thousands of people coming to the open border. Second question. Why are gas and home heating oil prices rising so quickly? In the Bay Area, in California, they're now over $4 a gallon for gas. All right? So why? Why? Since you took office 51 days ago, gas prices are up 30 to 50% everywhere. Why? And does that hurt? American worker. And finally, why are you not holding any press conferences? 51 days. The reason? Schedule is not packed. We went over this yesterday. On Tuesday, Mr. Biden had one thing on the calendar. A visit to a hardware store in D.C. to chat about how COVID's affected the hardware store. That's it. Yesterday, one thing meeting with the CEOs of Johnson & Johnson, another drug company, and talk about COVID vaccine. Now, does President Biden sit behind a resolute desk and get briefed? Yeah, he gets briefed. But that's not an event. I mean, you know, he's, what are you doing? Why can't you answer some questions? Just kind of wander on over. Friendly, they're friendly to you in the press corps. That mean, like they were to Trump, no, nah, not mean. Why can't you do it? So those are the three questions from O'Reilly, and I know I would never get a chance to answer them, uh, to ask them, and he would never answer them anyway. So 81,269,000, 81,269,000 Americans voted for Joe Biden. What do they think now? So I, I'm torturing of my liberal friends who voted for Biden <laughs> in a funny way, not in a mean way. But I'm asking them, I, I, is it open board, is that good? Good for you and your family? So I torture them. I'm so obnoxious. It's ridiculous. But it's a serious question. Do you, how many of the 81 million do you think are happy about the State of the Union 51 days into the Biden administration? So Rasmussen does a daily tracking poll on job approval. Right now, 50% of Americans approve Joe Biden's job performance, 47% disapprove. That's a low number for Mr. Biden. You usually get a honeymoon period here. So it's 50-50, it's within the margin of error. Okay, but the ones who did, and I have gotten a few answers, by the way, from my acquaintances and friends who voted for Biden. And it's, well, he's better than Trump. No matter how, how bad Biden is, it's better than him. That's it. That's the rationalization. So very few people are going, yeah, I made a mistake. I haven't heard that once. Yeah, I made a big mistake. Now, six months from now, yeah, it'll be a different story. So the Attorney General of Florida is uh, joining Arizona and Montana in suing the Biden administration. This is largely symbolic. But they'll bring it into federal court uh, because the Biden administration is not enforcing immigration law. And the states of Arizona, Montana, and Florida say it is hurting the citizens of those states because the federal government is not enforcing the stated law. Simple lawsuit. More states will join. And this is to embarrass Joe Biden because obviously they're not. They're not enforcing immigration. They did not. Now, the end game is to get as many foreign nationals here living in the United States as possible because most of them will vote Democrat.